Hello and welcome to Jolie Living, where today we'll be making uh, a wall bracket to mount a, uh, uh, a dressing mirror in our bedroom, in our bedroom closet. Um, I was just going to use some leftover pieces of trim that match our baseboard and cut a rabbit in the back, but I decided to uh, uh, spruce it up a little bit and uh, Make this something that uh, it's worth looking at when you're when you're looking in the mirror. So I'm going to show you how I did that, and I uh, hope you stick around and and uh, possibly try this yourself. All right. So for this mirror uh, mirror mount, I'm going to cut a heart shape out of metal. But first, I'm going to make a template out of quarter inch plywood that we will use uh, for using the plasma cutter. So here I'm just kind of tracing the outline of these hearts and uh, hoping to might have to press a little harder to see the outline. I could cut it and trace it, but I'm trying this for now. Just uh, so you already know I don't have a very steady hand, so using a straight edge where I can, kind of bearing down, hoping to get a bit of an imprint on the other side. Then once I get this, I will cut the wood out with a jigsaw. I've traced it pretty heavily in pencil. And uh, believe it or not, I can actually see it in indentation. So I'll fill that in with pencil. Yeah, I decided to give the bandsaw another chance and uh, use it to cut out the rest of the shape. Just take a small wax at it. I wasn't on the line, but I was pretty evenly outside of the line. And if anything, my cut is smoother than my tracing. It's now a little bit of sanding. I gotta cut that out. And uh, we'll have a shape. Okay, now that I've cleaned up the, the template, I've clamped it to the table, and we're gonna trace the template with the plasma cutter torch. Kind of our favorite part, cutting metal with fire. There we go. One of the reasons I didn't spend too much time cleaning up the, the wood is the metal has a little bit of some undulations and some imperfections. So I will spend a bit of time on the grinding wheel and or file cleaning that up to make it look good. Um, if you were using a CNC type machine, it would you could set the speed, it'd be very smooth. Besides my shaking, uh, it's just hard to make a, a perfectly even 
uh, drag across there between the friction on the metal and the friction on the wood. But I'm pleasantly pleased. This, uh, you know, still haven't made many cuts on it, but I like what I've seen. I used a 60 grit flapper disc on the grinder to clean up the outside edges and then to take off all the mill scale um, from one side. You know, the mill scale, it's a coating grayish to black to keep it from rusting. Um, and then I had used some I think it's 110 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander to take out grinding marks. And if you if you look closely, you can still see some marks. But that's going to add a little bit of character. Then I put the, uh, you know, I thought about just putting a piece of wood to covering that area right there to represent the rest of this heart. But instead, I decided. I put this heart on right there and traced it with an awl and got a bit of a, a line there. So you can see where the other heart is. And when you see the finish, it's a clear finish. So I'll just give a little bit of a representation of the second heart or a differentiation. Now we're gonna put a bit of a finish on our parts here. I have a copper sulfate mixture here. You'd be surprised. This is just mild steel and uh, watch what happens when you put this on. And you're, so you see it turning the copper color. It's actually, uh, you know, reacting with the steel. You can kind of just keep applying and then wash it off to, to stop reaction. I think I'm going to leave it somewhere right in there. Okay, so the mirror we're making this for is 18 inches wide. So I have this five and a half inch wide piece of alder. I'm going to cut to 18 inches long and then rip it in half and this will be the top and bottom mount for the mirror. So I'm just going to make a mark here at 18 inches. I'm going to go just a quarter inch past. We'll make a quick cut here on the radial arm saw. Put it up there. Be sure we're going to be cutting on the outside of our mark. I love the radial arm saw for the cross cuts. Yeah, our board is five and a half inches wide. I just want to rip it down the middle. So that would be two and three quarters. Normally you measure from your fence to the uh, edge, inside edge of the blade. But since we want to split this, and again, it doesn't matter too much if I'm off a little bit, but I've actually measured 
to the center of the blade. So get a little closer to a, a true split. Um, I'll go ahead and rip this and then we'll continue. To hold a mirror, we're just going to have a board at the top and the bottom, and we are just going to notch out about uh, really a, a, that's a rabbit about uh, you know a little more than a quarter of an inch, uh, quarter of an inch deep, quarter of an inch wide. Could do that with uh, could put a dado blade, knock it out all out with uh, one pass. You could use a router, but I'm enjoying using the saw right now. I brought it over one blade width is what will make a pass and uh, I've set the depth right where I want it. So we'll run these two through and then we'll scoot the, uh, move the fence over one more time or two. Keep things out of the way. Well. Of course, I went a little too far. I have to come back, move the fence back and pick up that little edge. And then a couple more passes on the inside. I made about four passes and uh, got it to where I'm pretty comfortable with that lip to contain my, my mirror. Um, and now we'll move on to the next step. Oh, and I did want to say, if you know if you don't have a table saw but you do want to hand cut something like this and make uh, a bracket or frame like this you know you could use two pieces of wood you don't have to I'm trying to just grab something here so let's just say you know this could be the outside piece and uh, you could screw or nail or glue another board on the back and this could be the lip that we just created it'd be a little more bulky and uh you know that's kind of thick that i mean a, a a wide gap so for a mirror there would be a lot of play in there maybe you could use a quarter inch sheet of plywood as your piece on the back i just want you to see there are other ways you can solve this problem um, if you don't have the tools to do what you want. And like I mentioned, there are even multiple tool tools to do the job I just did. router attached to a router table to uh, just put a nice little beveled edge on the boards. So I just have a uh, basically a 45 degree router bit in there and I will run these boards through. I'm thinking I'll leave the skinny lip um, not routed just so I don't make it too thin and uh, susceptible to, to breaking and just looks. We can do whatever we want. 
There's the bit. All right, I have the, this be the top piece of the frame uh, kind of clamped down on my router table. This is just a high surface that works good for me. I have traced the outline of the bottom of the metal hearts and I want to inlay those into this wood. So I'm going to use the router with that little bit there to uh, take out all the wood inside of that line. All right, I got this area pretty cleaned up with the chisel. Uh, it sure teaches you um, using a chisel, a semi-dull chisel. Um, makes you understand why you would want a sharp chisel to make that clean edge and to clean up to that edge. Uh, it would be best done with a a nice sharp chisel. So I messed around with it for a while and then uh, used some sandpaper to, uh, on a block to kind of clean it up. Now I'm going to put a coat of stain on it. I just have a regular oil based minwax stain. Same color. Same wood as everything in our house. This alder never used the Danish oil on top of stain. Normally I think it's, uh, you know, meant to just enhance the natural colors of the wood. But I wanted to match the colors in our house, so it looks like it's soaking in. And what, uh, you know, what the Danish oil says it does is it, it uh, soaks into your wood. It, it, it hardens within the pore space, not just on top. So it's just, it's not just a surficial uh, protectant. And you only have to let a, uh, a coat set there for eight to 10 minutes before you can do another. So it goes on rather quickly. And then you can add more in the future, no problem. You know, it's, it's not sticky, it's, it's oily. So I just use a rag to apply it. If you have any excess sitting there, you can wipe it off. But uh, most part, just 
work it in everywhere and uh, keep moving on to the next and then I'm going to I'm not going to put any in the inlay area where the heart goes because I'm going to glue that down. Okay, so the Danish oil has soaked in and dried and made a nice finish on the surface. Now we're ready to glue the hearts onto the board. And overall, I think the fit is pretty good everywhere, but I'm going to put a little bit of uh, wood putty in this corner up here. It's like I just didn't make the curve, which is hard with a wider chisel. All right, to glue the, uh, the metal hearts to the wood, I'm going to use some uh, Gorilla Super Glue Gel. A lot of times I have a product called E6000 that is kind of a, a thick, all-purpose, heavy-duty adhesive that I really like using, but I was out of that. I'm going to use this. It says to use about one drop per square inch. So I'm going to put a few drops on here, hold it for uh, 10 to 45 seconds, and give it 24 hours to cure. That may be a little more than one inch per square. One drop per square inch. All right, here goes the placement, I hope. I get it where I want it. It's just kind of squeezing back towards me. All right, I think that wraps it up for this project. I want to thank you for joining us at Jolie Living. Um, I hope it inspires you to make the same thing or something like it. Uh, just be creative and see what you come up with. Solve a, a, a problem or uh, it's not necessarily a problem, but something that you need to take care of at home. So leave a comment below. Let me how it goes for you. And uh, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. I saw the sign, but I didn't have time for Jumbo Stuff Well. I don't know when I'll get back to West Kentucky again. But the next time that I do, I'm going to go in and try them Jumbo Stuff Well. Jumbo Stuff Well. Life's moving too fast when you have to pass on.